they had always assumed we were weak, that our world, like many others on the edges of the known universe, was insignificant, a speck in the cosmic dust. The Empire's historians wrote us off long before they ever knew our name. To them, we were a dead end of evolution, a failure of nature, one among many civilizations that would rise briefly and fade into the endless darkness without ever learning how vast the universe truly was. But assumptions are fragile. The signal reached them in the early hours of their solar cycle, an untraceable pulse. It carried no language, no message that could be decoded. It was simply there. At first, they dismissed it as background noise, a glitch in the system. But the signal persisted, growing louder, almost aggressive. It didn't beg for attention. It demanded it. Commander Saren was the first to notice something was wrong. His eyes, hollowed from years of war, remained fixed on the data. A flicker of discomfort crossed his face as he scanned the readings again. It wasn't fear. He had seen too much to be afraid of anything tangible. It was something else, something he couldn't place, gnawing at him. This can't be right, he muttered under his breath his voice barely more than a rasp in the silence of the control room. What's that, Marcus? His second-in-command glanced over with disinterest. He had seen Saren unsettled before, usually before a planetary invasion. Saren's instincts were notorious for being sharp. The readings from the outer sector. They're wrong. There's no way they're wrong. Marcus smirked, turning his attention back to his console. It's probably just an echo from a nearby system. The scouts have been saying those things are common out here. Saren shook his head, his focus narrowing. Echoes don't come with energy spikes like this, and echoes don't grow in intensity. Now Marcus frowned. He sat up, leaning towards Saren's console, his interest peaked. What kind of intensity? Saren tapped a few commands. The holographic display flickered casting an eerie glow across his sharp features. This, he said, pointing to a cluster of jagged lines that pulsed across the screen. Marcus leaned closer, his amusement gone. That's not normal. No, Saren said quietly, it isn't. There was a long silence between them as they both stared at the display. Something was here, something that didn't belong. Get the crew ready, Saren said after a pause. We're going in. They arrived above the planet within hours, hovering in low orbit over a patch of deep, untouched wilderness. The scanners flickered with erratic feedback, struggling to make sense of the signals bombarding them from below. It was as if the planet itself was trying to push them away, like a body rejecting a foreign invader. Earth, Terra as the locals had once called it, looked deceptively serene from above. Oceans stretched vast and dark broken by swirling storm systems. Forests, deep and ancient, crowded the landmasses like a dark sea of green. To any observer, it was beautiful, but Saren knew better. This place, it's wrong, said Drakos, the ship's engineer, his voice filled with unease as he scanned the landscape. The data keeps shifting. It's like the whole planet is alive. Saren remained silent, eyes fixed on the horizon. He felt it too. It wasn't just the unpredictability of the planet's surface that unnerved him. There was something in the air, something unseen but palpable. It was in the way the trees moved, in the way the wind seemed to whisper through the ship's hull. The planet had a presence, an awareness, as if it was watching them. Commander, Marcus interrupted, his voice sharp. We're picking up something near the crash site. We should go down now, before the signal fades again. Saren nodded and stood, his gaze lingering on the planet below. We move in pairs. No one goes off course. This planet is not what it seems. The landing was rougher than anticipated. The moment the ship touched ground, everything changed. The planet's calm exterior vanished, replaced by a suffocating sense of hostility. The air was thick, almost heavy, pressing against them as they stepped onto the surface, Every sound seemed amplified, the rustling of leaves, the distant calls of creatures unseen. It was as though the planet was holding its breath, waiting for them to make a mistake. Dracos, you take point, Saren ordered. The engineer moved forward, his face pale but determined. His scanner beeped rhythmically as he swept it across the terrain. 
It's here, Dracos whispered. The signal? It's coming from that direction. They moved cautiously through the thick underbrush, the ground beneath their feet soft and uneven. The forest loomed around them, its trees twisted and gnarled, their branches reaching out like skeletal fingers. The deeper they went, the more oppressive the air became. It was as if the planet itself resented their presence. After an hour of trudging through the wilderness, they reached a clearing. At its center, half buried in the soil, was an object. Metallic. Alien. This is it, Dracos muttered, the source of the signal. Marcus approached cautiously, his hand resting on the grip of his weapon. Looks old. Could be one of ours from a previous scouting mission. Saren frowned, kneeling beside the object. No, this is different. His fingers brushed against the cold metal, and a shiver ran through him. There was something about this thing, something ancient. It felt wrong. What do you think it is? Dracos asked, his voice low. Saren didn't answer. His thoughts were racing, trying to piece together the puzzle. This object, it wasn't just a piece of debris, it was something more. Something far older than their technology, older than their empire. Commander, Marcus called out suddenly, his voice tense. We have movement. Saren snapped his head up, following Marcus's gaze toward the tree line. Shapes, shadowy, barely visible, moved in the darkness. They were fast, darting between the trees like ghosts. Get ready, Saren barked, his hand reaching for his weapon. The shadows moved closer, surrounding them. The air grew colder, and the forest seemed to close in, the trees swaying in unnatural rhythm. This isn't right, Dracos whispered, his voice shaking. This place, it's alive. Saren's heart pounded in his chest as he tightened his grip on his weapon. The shadows closed in, circling them like predators stalking prey. For the first time in years, Saren felt fear, a deep, primal fear. Fall back, he ordered, his voice steady despite the growing dread in his chest. Get to the ship. They turned to retreat, but the path behind them was gone. The forest had shifted, twisted, blocking their way. The shadows were closer now, almost within reach. This planet, Marcus gasped, it's playing with us. Saren's mind raced. They had underestimated this world. It wasn't just the creatures, the wild terrain. It was something deeper, something woven into the very fabric of the planet. Something ancient, malevolent, and intelligent. We need to move, Saren shouted. Now. The shadows lunged. And then everything went black. They woke in silence. Saren blinked, his eyes adjusting to the dim light. He was no longer in the forest, no longer surrounded by his men. He was alone, lying on cold, metallic ground. A figure stood over him, cloaked in shadow, its presence oppressive and overwhelming. Welcome, the figure said, its voice deep and resonant, echoing through the empty space. You have come far, but you are not ready. Saren tried to speak, but no words came. You have seen nothing yet, Commander, the figure continued, its tone almost mocking. Your empire believes it controls the stars, but this planet dot 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 it controls far more than you can imagine. The figure leaned closer, its face still obscured in darkness. Everything here can kill you, and it will, unless you learn to listen. Saren felt a chill crawl up his spine as the figure stepped back, its form dissolving into the darkness. The signal, the object, the shadows. None of it had been an accident. Earth was far more dangerous than they had ever imagined. And it wasn't done with them yet. When I opened my eyes, the cold metal beneath my hands was the first thing I felt, a stark reminder that the forest had been no dream. My vision was blurry at first hazed by the remnants of unconsciousness. It wasn't just a ship's floor, though. The surface I lay on thrummed with a rhythm, like the low hum of something alive, something vast. It pulsed beneath me, and for a brief, unsettling moment, I wasn't sure if it was the ship or my own heartbeat. The memories rushed back, the shadows in the forest, the figure, that voice. The forest wasn't the forest. I wasn't on the ground. No, I was somewhere else. I pushed myself up, 
my muscles aching as if I had been running for hours. Around me, the room stretched impossibly far, the metal walls glinting faintly in the dim light. There were no windows, no consoles, nothing familiar about this space. I wasn't alone. Dracos was on the ground, a few meters away, still unconscious. His breathing was shallow but steady. No sign of Marcus, no sign of the others. My head spun as I tried to make sense of where I was, what this place could be, and why, above all, why had they brought us here? You're awake. The voice was close, impossibly close, though I hadn't seen anyone approach. I turned sharply, instinct driving my hand to the sidearm holster that was no longer there. There was a figure standing just a few paces away, human in form but draped in a black cloak that absorbed the surrounding light, making it impossible to see their face. The figure didn't move but radiated an eerie presence, the kind that made the hairs on the back of your neck rise, the same presence I had felt in the forest. You, I breathed, my voice hoarse. What are you? The figure tilted its head slightly, as if amused by the question. The better question, Commander Saren, is what are you? There was something in the way the voice spoke that gnawed at me, calm, almost mocking, yet laced with a kind of ancient authority that refused to be questioned. This being, whatever it was, wasn't asking out of curiosity. It knew the answer. It wanted to hear me say it. I don't have time for games, I spat, stepping toward the figure. You've taken my crew, hijacked my ship. Tell me what you want. The figure didn't move. I want nothing. What I want is irrelevant. What matters is what you have woken up to. My hands balled into fists. Woken up. I glanced around again, searching for any sign of a way out. But the room remained still, a metallic prison stretching in all directions. The strange rhythm continued beneath the floor. The figure turned away pacing slowly as if deep in thought. You thought your species was alone, that the universe was waiting for you to conquer it. Like so many before you, you thought yourself superior. But there is no superiority here, Commander. No hierarchy of strength. What you fail to understand is that the very nature of your existence has been orchestrated. Cut the cryptic talk, I interrupted, feeling a surge of anger. If we're dead, just say it. If this is some kind of simulation, say that. I don't care. What I need is my crew, and I need to get off this rock. The figure paused, considering me. Then, it spoke with a strange finality. This isn't a simulation. Nor are you dead. But leaving, that's a misconception you must let go of. There was something in the air, something thick and heavy that pressed against my chest. I couldn't explain it, but I knew the figure was right. This wasn't a place you could escape. It wasn't even a place you could understand. And yet, I needed to push further. What is this? I demanded, forcing the words through clenched teeth. Why bring us here? The figure stepped closer, and for the first time, I could see its face, or what should have been a face. But there was only darkness. A void, not empty, but filled with shifting shapes, like a thousand eyes blinking in and out of existence. This is not Earth, the figure said, its voice taking on a chilling tone. Not the one you thought you were visiting. What you believe to be Earth is only a veil, a thin layer of reality masking something much older, much more dangerous. You entered a place where your mind cannot comprehend the rules. My throat tightened as those words sank in. Not Earth. That phrase lingered, gnawing at the edges of my sanity. What the hell had we walked into? You assume this world would bend to your understanding, that its dangers were physical, tangible, but the real threat. The figure leaned closer, is the world itself. I stumbled back, my pulse racing. The planet? The figure straightened again. Not the one you see, the one underneath. You're standing on the surface of something far greater than you can grasp. It's not a world as you understand it. It's an entity, a consciousness, and it does not want you here. The air became oppressive, every breath heavier than the last. My mind scrambled to piece together fragments of what I had learned. Our initial readings, the strange anomalies, the erratic behavior of the environment. Everything had felt off the moment we landed, but I hadn't questioned it. Then why are we still alive? I managed to ask. 
alive? The figure almost laughed. You are not alive in the way you were before. You are caught in its gaze, suspended between what you were and what you could become. The real question, Commander, is how much longer you can stay that way. Before I could respond, Draco stirred on the floor behind me. His eyes fluttered open, confusion evident in his expression as he struggled to sit up. Commander, what? What happened? Where are we? I helped him to his feet, keeping my eyes on the figure. We're not on the ship anymore, and I don't know if we ever will be again. Dracos blinked, taking in the room with wide eyes. What is this place, and who is? The figure turned its faceless gaze toward Dracos, silencing him instantly. Your questions are irrelevant. What matters now is whether you will listen or continue to stumble blindly through the unknown. Dracos took a step back, clearly unnerved. Listen to what? You haven't told us anything useful. I placed a hand on his shoulder, trying to keep him calm. We'll get out of this, but we need to understand what's happening first. The figure watched us in silence for a long moment before speaking again. The entity beneath you is stirring. Your presence has awoken something ancient, something that has slumbered for eons. You and your crew are nothing more than sparks in the darkness, fleeting and fragile, and yet, you may be the key. The key to what? I asked, my voice cold. To stopping what comes next. Before I could respond, the ground beneath us shifted. The rhythmic pulse that had been steady until now began to quicken, growing more intense with each passing second. The walls around us seemed to bend and ripple, as if the very space we occupied was being distorted. Dracos grabbed my arm, panic creeping into his voice. What the hell is happening, Commander? I didn't have an answer. The figure remained still, as though it had been expecting this. Your time is running out, the figure said, its voice echoing in the growing chaos. The entity has seen you. It knows you. And it will not be gentle. The walls began to close in, the once vast room shrinking, collapsing in on itself. I could feel the pressure building, pressing down on me from all sides. We have to move, I shouted, grabbing Dracos and pulling him toward what seemed to be the far end of the room. But there was no end, no escape. The figure's voice followed us, growing fainter as the walls pressed in. You thought you could conquer this world, but it will be the one to conquer you. And then, just as quickly as it had begun, the collapse stopped. The walls were still, the pressure lifted. I turned around, expecting the figure to be gone. But it was still there, standing as calmly as before, watching us. This is your warning, it said, its voice low and menacing. Leave this place before it consumes you, if you can. With that, the figure dissolved into the air, leaving us alone in the eerily silent room. Dracos and I stood there for a moment, both of us breathing heavily trying to process what had just happened. What, what do we do now? Commander, Drokos asked, his voice barely above a whisper. I didn't have an answer, but I knew one thing for certain. We were no longer in control. The planet, the entity beneath it, whatever it was, it was calling the shots now. And we were just pawns in its game. We made our way out of the room, guided by a strange instinct more than anything else, the corridors of the structure, or ship, or whatever it was, were narrow and winding, as if designed to disorient. Draco stayed close behind me, his footsteps quick and nervous. I tried to focus on finding a way out, but my mind kept returning to the figure's words, a planet with consciousness, an ancient entity that had been slumbering beneath the surface. It was absurd, beyond anything I had ever encountered, but something told me it wasn't a lie. The rhythmic pulse had returned, softer now, but still present, a constant reminder that we were standing on something alive. I needed to find Marcus and the others, and fast. The corridor seemed to stretch endlessly, each turn leading us deeper into the unknown. The air in the narrow corridor was thick, like walking through fog, though no mist surrounded us. Each breath I took felt deliberate, forced as if the environment itself was somehow deciding how much oxygen I deserved. The walls around us pulsed with that same rhythm, 
a slow, throbbing beat that seemed to synchronize with my pulse. Dracos followed closely behind, his eyes darting left and right as if expecting the walls to shift again. He hadn't said much since the figure disappeared, but the tension radiating from him was palpable. I could sense his fear. Hell, I could feel my own creeping up my spine like ice water. We walked in silence, navigating through turns that felt less like they were guiding us and more like they were leading us deeper into a labyrinth of madness. Something about the architecture defied logic. We should have reached the exterior by now, or at least come across another part of the ship, a junction or even a dead end. But the hallways just spiraled inward, tighter and darker, until it felt like the walls themselves were watching. What if it's playing with us? Dracos whispered finally his voice barely audible over the strange hum around us. What do you mean? I asked, glancing back at him. His face was pale, eyes wide. Playing how? This thing, he gestured vaguely around us. The entity. What if it knows exactly where we are, what we're doing? What if it's letting us think we're finding a way out, when really, we're walking straight into its trap? I didn't answer right away. The thought had already crossed my mind more than once. This whole place felt like an elaborate game, one where the rules shifted depending on the mood of the player, but acknowledging that out loud would only make it worse. We don't have another option, I said finally, my voice more resolute than I felt. We keep moving, until we find Marcus, until we understand what this thing wants. Dracos didn't argue, but I could see the doubt in his eyes. He didn't believe we'd find an exit. Not anymore. Neither did I. We took another turn, this one leading into a broader chamber. The walls here were smoother, almost organic, like the inside of some massive creature's throat. The pulsing rhythm was stronger now, and I felt it reverberate through the soles of my boots. It was no longer just a sound, it was inside me, threading its way through my nerves, my bones. This isn't right, Dracos muttered under his breath. He had stopped walking, his eyes fixed on the walls as if they were about to swallow him whole. This isn't how ships are built. It's like... Like what? I pressed. Though I had a sinking feeling, I already knew what he was going to say. It's like we're inside something alive. I wanted to tell him he was wrong, that his imagination was getting the better of him. But the truth was, I'd been thinking the same thing. Every step we took felt like we were being absorbed deeper into a living organism, rather than exploring an abandoned structure. There was something else too, something I hadn't mentioned to Dracos. A sound, faint, almost imperceptible, but it was there. It echoed through the chambers ahead of us, a low, guttural noise that seemed to vibrate just beyond the edge of hearing. It was like a voice, but not quite human. What is that? Dracos asked his face contorting in confusion. He'd heard it, too. I don't know, I replied, my hand instinctively reaching for the weapon I didn't have. I cursed under my breath, suddenly feeling vulnerable without my sidearm. But we need to keep moving. We entered the chamber cautiously, the sound growing louder as we advanced. The floor beneath us seemed to ripple with every step, the metal giving way in subtle, nauseating waves, like walking on a surface that wasn't solid at all. And then, we saw it. At the far end of the chamber, there was a structure. It jutted out from the ground, sleek and black, with sharp, angular edges that defied the organic nature of the rest of the place. It looked almost like a control panel, though that didn't make any sense. What was it controlling? And why here, in the middle of this, thing? Dracos and I exchanged a glance, neither of us eager to approach the device. But there was no other option. If this was a trap, we were already caught in it. I'll check it out, I said, moving toward the panel. Dracos stayed a few steps behind, his hands shaking slightly. The air around the structure was colder, and the rhythmic pulsing seemed to fade the closer we got to it. The surface of the panel was smooth featureless, save for a single indentation in the center. It wasn't obvious at first, but as I looked closer, I realized what it was. A handprint, I murmured, my heart racing. It's a damn handprint. Draco stepped closer, his brow furrowing. Do you think it's human? I hesitated, my mind racing. 
There's only one way to find out. Taking a deep breath, I press my hand into the indentation. For a moment, nothing happened. The chamber remained still, the silence thick and oppressive. And then the floor shifted. It was subtle at first, a low rumble beneath our feet. But it grew stronger, more violent, until the entire chamber was trembling. The walls began to pulse in time with the floor, the rhythm erratic, frantic. Commander, what the hell did you do? Draco shouted, panic rising in his voice. I don't know, I yelled back, trying to steady myself as the ground bucked beneath us. Just hold on. The black structure in front of us began to glow, faint at first, but growing brighter with each passing second. The light was cold, unnatural, and it cast long, twisted shadows on the walls around us. And then, without warning, the floor gave way. We fell for what felt like hours, though it couldn't have been more than a few seconds. The darkness swallowed us whole, the cold air rushing past in a deafening roar. I tried to grab hold of something, anything, but there was nothing, only the void beneath us, pulling us down, deeper into the unknown. When we finally hit the ground, it wasn't solid. It was soft, almost spongy, and it absorbed the impact with a sickening squelch. I groaned, rolling onto my back, trying to catch my breath. Dracos landed beside me, gasping for air. Where, where the hell are we? He panted, his voice barely audible over the pounding in my ears. I didn't answer. I couldn't. My mind was still reeling from the fall, from the sheer impossibility of what had just happened. We were no longer in the chamber. That much was clear. The walls around us were no longer metal or organic. They were something else entirely, something I couldn't even begin to describe. They shifted and pulsed, not with the rhythm of a heartbeat, but with a chaotic energy that defied explanation. The ground beneath us was slick, wet, and I realized with a sinking feeling that it wasn't just moisture. There was something alive, writhing beneath the surface. I scrambled to my feet, my stomach churning. We need to move, I said, my voice hoarse. We can't stay here. Dracos nodded, but his eyes were wide with fear. He looked like he was on the verge of breaking, and I couldn't blame him. This place, it wasn't just hostile. It was predatory. It was watching us, waiting for us to make a mistake. We stumbled forward, our movements sluggish and disoriented. The walls around us seemed to stretch and warp, bending in ways that shouldn't have been possible. Every turn we took felt wrong, like we were walking in circles, though the path never repeated. And then, out of the darkness, a sound, a voice. At first, it was distant, almost indistinguishable from the ambient noise of the place. But as we moved closer, it became clearer, more defined. It was Marcus. Commander, Dracos, over here. I felt a surge of relief, though it was tempered by suspicion. Marcus had been missing for hours. How had he ended up here? And why hadn't we heard him before now? We rounded a corner, and there he was, leaning against a twisted column of black stone, his face pale and drawn. He looked exhausted, but otherwise unharmed. Marcus, Dracos called, rushing forward. Thank God, we thought you were. Don't, Marcus said, his voice low and strained. Don't come any closer. Dracos stopped in his tracks, confusion flickering across his face. What are you talking about? We need to get out of here. Marcus shook his head, his eyes filled with a strange, hollow emptiness. You don't understand. It's too late. What do you mean, too late? I demanded, stepping forward. We're getting out of this place, all of us. Marcus looked at me, and for the first time, I saw it, something dark, something wrong, lurking just beneath the surface of his skin. His eyes were dull, almost lifeless, and there was a faint, sickly glow emanating from his veins. I've seen it, he whispered. I've seen what's coming, and there's no escaping it. A chill ran down my spine. The air around us seemed to grow colder, the walls closing in, and as I stared into Marcus's hollow eyes, I realized with a sickening certainty that he wasn't the same man we'd lost. He was something else. The silence that followed Marcus's words was suffocating. Draco stood frozen, his outstretched hand trembling in the low, eerie light. 
the walls of the chamber seemed to pulse in response to Marcus's revelation, as if the structure itself had become a living witness to his transformation. Every breath felt like an act of rebellion against the oppressive force surrounding us. I stepped closer, cautiously, trying to balance the shock with my instinct to survive. Something about the way Marcus was standing, the strange glow beneath his skin, it was all wrong, a grotesque parody of humanity. But beneath that horror, a part of me clung to the hope that he was still in there, trapped inside whatever had taken him over. Marcus, I said, keeping my voice steady, what happened to you? Tell me everything. He didn't respond immediately. His eyes, dull, almost devoid of life, shifted toward me, but they didn't seem to see me. Instead, they looked past, into something deeper, something far beyond the physical. When he finally spoke, his voice was barely above a whisper. It's been watching us, he said. Since the moment we stepped onto this ship, it knows our fears, it knows what we want, what we dream of, and it uses that against us. What is it? I pressed. What's doing this to you? Marcus laughed, a hollow, mirthless sound that sent chills racing up my spine. It's not just one thing. It's the ship, the space between, the very air we breathe. It's everything and nothing. You can't fight it because it's already inside of us. Dracos took a step back, his face drained of color. Commander, we need to leave. Now. But I couldn't move. Not yet. Not until I understood the full scope of the nightmare we had stumbled into. I needed to know how deep this infection ran, if there was any chance of saving Marcus, or if we were all doomed from the start. How do you know this? I asked, still focused on him. What did it show you? His eyes flickered, the dull light beneath his skin pulsing in time with the strange energy that filled the room. I saw everything. Time doesn't work here like it does outside. It showed me what's coming. It let me feel the future. And what did you see? Dracos asked, his voice barely masking the terror he was feeling. I could see it in his eyes, the sinking realization that Marcus might already be gone. Marcus closed his eyes, his head tilting back slightly as if recalling some distant, terrible memory. I saw the end of us, he whispered. Not just us, everything. We're nothing but whispers in the dark echoes of what we thought we were. It showed me the truth. We're all hollow inside. His words cut deeper than I expected. The raw finality in his voice, the conviction, it was as if he had accepted our destruction as inevitable, and worse, as deserved. I took a breath, forcing myself to think rationally. This wasn't over yet. You're still alive, Marcus. If you can fight it, if we can. No. He interrupted, shaking his head slowly. I'm not alive, not really. Whatever I was, it's gone now. Something inside him was shifting again, the glow beneath his skin spreading like a network of cracks through his veins. I knew, without a doubt, that time was running out. If we stayed here, we'd end up like him. Or worse. Dracos took another step back, his panic growing with every passing second. Commander, we have to go. We have to go, now. I nodded, but my gaze stayed locked on Marcus. He was staring at me now, his eyes filled with something unrecognizable, some twisted mix of sorrow and understanding. You can't outrun it, he said quietly. You can't escape. It's in all of us now. I didn't respond. Instead, I turned to Dracos and signaled for him to move. He hesitated for only a moment before nodding and together we backed away from Marcus, keeping our eyes on him until we reached the far side of the chamber. The moment we crossed the threshold, the walls shifted again, closing in behind us with a low, almost organic hiss. I could still feel Marcus's presence in the space beyond, but I didn't dare look back. The corridors we found ourselves in were darker now, the strange pulsing glow fading into the distance, Every step felt like we were moving deeper into a dream, or a nightmare, where the rules of reality no longer applied. The walls here were smoother, more fluid, as if they could shift at any moment and trap us inside. Dracos walked in silence beside me, his hands still trembling. I could feel the weight of his fear pressing down on him, crushing the last remnants of his resolve. Do you think he's right? 
Dracos asked suddenly, breaking the silence. His voice was barely above a whisper, as if speaking any louder might summon whatever horrors lay ahead. I don't know, I replied, my mind racing with possibilities. But we can't just give up. There has to be a way out of here. There has to be something we missed. Dracos didn't respond, but I could see the doubt etched into his features. He had already lost hope, even if he wasn't willing to admit it yet. We continued on in silence, navigating the labyrinthine corridors with no clear direction. The deeper we went, the more distorted the environment became. The walls no longer felt like metal or stone. They felt alive. They pulsed and shifted, as if the entire structure was breathing around us. We're going in circles, Dracos muttered, his frustration bubbling to the surface. This place, it's messing with our heads. Stay focused, I urged. We'll find a way. But even as I said the words, I knew they were hollow. This place, whatever it was, it didn't follow the rules of logic or reason. It was something beyond our understanding, something that defied the very laws of physics. And then we heard it again. The voice. It wasn't Marcus this time. It was something else, something older, deeper. A voice that seemed to echo from the very walls themselves, vibrating through the air like a low, guttural hum. Who are you? The voice was neither male nor female, neither human nor alien. It was something in between, a sound that sent shivers down my spine and made the hair on the back of my neck stand on end. Dracos froze beside me, his eyes wide with terror. Commander. I didn't respond. My heart was pounding in my chest, and every instinct screamed at me to run. But there was nowhere to go. The corridors had closed in around us, and the voice was coming from everywhere and nowhere all at once. We know you, the voice continued, its tone almost curious. We have watched you. We have studied you. You are fascinating. What do you want? I demanded, my voice shaking despite my efforts to stay calm. There was a long pause, and for a moment I thought the voice had disappeared. But then it returned, stronger this time, more insistent. We want everything. The wall shifted again, this time more violently. The floor beneath us trembled, and I felt a wave of nausea wash over me as the environment twisted and warped around us. It was as if the entire structure was alive, bending and reshaping itself to suit the will of whatever was speaking to us. We have waited, the voice said, its tone now dripping with malice. For so long, and now, you are here, you will join us. You will become one. No, Draco shouted, his voice cracking with panic. We're not. We're not part of this. The voice laughed, a low, guttural sound that echoed through the chamber. You already are. The walls closed in tighter, the space around us shrinking with every passing second. I could feel the pressure building, the air growing thinner, as if the very environment was squeezing the life out of us and then I saw it. A shape, moving in the darkness ahead. It was faint at first, almost indistinguishable from the shadows, but as it drew closer, I could make out its form. It wasn't human. It wasn't even close. The creature was tall, unnaturally so, its limbs elongated and twisted in ways that defied anatomy. Its skin was slick and black, reflecting the faint light like oil on water and its eyes, cold, empty voids, stared directly at us. We will consume you, the voice said, the creature's mouth opening in a grotesque smile. We will take what you are, and you will become part of us. Dracos was shaking, his hands clenched into fists at his sides. We have to run, Commander. We have to. There's nowhere to go, I whispered, my voice barely audible over the pounding of my heart. The walls had closed in completely now, trapping us in a small, suffocating space with the creature looming just feet away. The creature stepped closer, its movements slow and deliberate. I could feel the air growing colder, the very life draining out of the room. We are endless, the voice said, its tone almost soothing. The walls pressed in as if the ship itself had become an extension of the thing that spoke to us. Every breath felt forced, like the air had thickened into a tangible force, suffocating the space around me. 
The creature stood just outside arm's reach, its eyes drilling into my skull, not with malice, but with hunger. We are endless, the voice repeated, though the words felt less like sound and more like a thought implanted directly into my mind. Draco stood frozen beside me, his breath shallow and rapid. He wanted to run, I could see it in the twitch of his muscles, the clench of his fists, but running wasn't an option, not anymore. The walls had closed in, the floor beneath us pulsed with the same dark energy that had consumed Marcus. Every exit, every conceivable escape was gone. We need to move, I whispered, more to myself than to Dracos, but he shook his head, his eyes wide with terror. Move where, he rasped. There's nothing left, Commander, nowhere to go. I stared at the creature before us, its grotesque form towering over us, and I felt something stir inside me, an idea, something small, barely formed but insistent. My thoughts raced, dissecting the situation, analyzing every possibility, every detail we'd seen so far. If this ship, this thing, was alive, it wasn't just a trap, it was a mind. And minds, no matter how powerful, had weaknesses. Wait, I said, raising a hand as Dracos tensed beside me. This thing, this ship, it's not what it seems. We're not dealing with a simple organism or machine. It's more than that. The creature didn't move. It just stood there, watching, waiting, as if it was curious to see what I would do next. We have waited for so long, the voice whispered again, the sound vibrating through my bones. We have consumed so many. And now, you will join us. You will become part of the Endless. Dracos clenched his fist tighter, his knuckles white. I won't become part of anything, he growled, taking a step forward, his gaze fixed on the creature. But I grabbed his arm, pulling him back before he could do something reckless. Stop, I hissed. That's exactly what it wants. If we give in, we're done. What do you mean, he snapped, his voice on the edge of breaking. You think there's a way out of this? There's always a way, I replied, though the words felt hollow. But we have to understand it first. The creature tilted its head, its black, slick skin glistening in the low light. The smile that spread across its face sent a chill down my spine. You are clever, the voice said, but not clever enough. I ignored it, focusing instead on the way the ship had reacted to us since we boarded. The walls, the floors, they weren't just alive, they were responsive. Everything had shifted and changed the moment we stepped inside. The way the ship had morphed around us, leading us deeper into its core, wasn't random. It was deliberate, purposeful. It was testing us. We need to make it stop, I said quietly, more to myself than to Dracos. It's feeding off us. Our fear, our desperation, that's what it wants. That's what it's been waiting for. The creature took another step forward, its eyes gleaming with cold amusement. You misunderstand, the voice said, its tone almost mocking. We do not feed. We consume. We become. Draco stepped back, his hands trembling at his sides. What the hell are you talking about, he shouted, his voice cracking under the weight of his fear. The creature's smile widened, and the walls around us pulsed in time with its words. You will see. You will understand. In time, you will be one with us. I could feel the pressure building again, the air around us growing heavier, thicker. The ship was closing in, tightening its grip on us, pushing us closer to whatever dark fate it had planned. But then something strange happened. The creature's form wavered, just for a moment, as if it had lost focus. The walls around us rippled, the energy that had been so oppressive suddenly flickering, weakening. It was brief, barely noticeable, but I saw it. And I knew. It's not invincible, I whispered, my heart pounding in my chest. It's not all-powerful. There's something. It's struggling. Dracos looked at me, his eyes wide with confusion. What are you talking about? This ship, this creature, it's connected somehow. It's all one thing. But it's not perfect. It's flawed. We just need to find the weakness. Find the weakness? Dracos's voice rose in panic. How the hell are we supposed to do that when it's standing right in front of us? The creature's smile faded, replaced by a look of pure malice. 
You cannot fight us, the voice hissed. You are nothing. You are hollow. But I wasn't listening anymore. My mind was racing, searching for answers, for anything that could help us. The ship was alive, yes, but it was more than that. It was a mind, a collective intelligence, vast and ancient, but still a mind. And minds could be manipulated. Minds could be broken. We need to disrupt it, I said, my voice steady despite the fear clawing at my chest. We need to break its focus. Draco stared at me, his eyes wide with disbelief. And how the hell are we supposed to do that? I didn't have an answer, not yet. But I knew we couldn't stay here, couldn't let the ship consume us. We had to fight, even if we didn't fully understand what we were up against. The creature moved again, its black, slick limbs stretching toward us. There is no escape, the voice whispered, its tone cold and final. You are already ours. And then, without warning, the floor beneath us gave way. We fell through darkness, the air rushing past us in a deafening roar. I couldn't see, couldn't breathe, the force of the fall tearing at my senses. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the fall stopped. I hit the ground hard, the impact knocking the breath from my lungs. I gasped for air, my vision swimming as I struggled to regain my bearings. The world around me was dark, the walls shifting and pulsing with the same dark energy that had consumed the rest of the ship. Dracos landed beside me with a grunt, clutching his side as he struggled to his feet. What the hell was that? I didn't answer. My mind was still reeling, trying to make sense of what had just happened. The ship, no, the thing, had dropped us deeper into its core, and now we were somewhere else, somewhere darker, more twisted. The air here was thick with the same oppressive energy, but there was something else. Something new. A low hum, barely audible, but constant. It vibrated through the walls, through the floor, through my bones. It was the same sound I had heard before, but louder now, more insistent. We're close, I whispered, my voice barely audible. This is where it's strongest. Drokos looked at me, his face pale and drawn. What do we do? I stood slowly, my muscles protesting with every movement. We find its core. We disrupt it. How? I didn't have an answer, but I knew we couldn't stop now. We were too deep, too far gone to turn back. Whatever this thing was, whatever it wanted, we had to stop it. We had to destroy it before it destroyed us. We moved through the darkness, the low hum growing louder with every step. The walls here were different, more organic more alive. They pulsed and shifted, as if they were breathing, reacting to our presence. The energy in the air was suffocating, pressing down on us with every breath. And then, we saw it. A massive chamber, its walls lined with strange, pulsing nodes of light. In the center of the chamber was a large, black mass, its surface slick and shifting, like oil on water. It was the source of the hum, the source of the energy that filled the ship the creature's core. We need to destroy it, I said, my voice low and steady. That's our only chance. Draco stared at the mass, his face pale with fear. How do we do that? I didn't know, but I wasn't going to let that stop me. We had come too far, seen too much. We had to finish this. I took a step toward the mass, my heart pounding in my chest. The air around it was thick with energy, crackling with raw, untamed power. It was alive, pulsing with the same dark force that had consumed the ship. And then, as I reached out to touch it, the walls around us came alive. The chamber shifted, the walls closing in, the nodes of light flaring with a sudden, blinding intensity. The hum grew louder, a deafening roar that filled the space, vibrating through the air. The creature's voice echoed through the chamber, its tone cold and final. You will not escape. But I didn't listen. I reached out, my hand brushing against the surface of the mass, and I felt it, an overwhelming surge of energy, of darkness, of pure, unfiltered power. And then everything went black. I woke to silence. The hum was gone. The air was still, the walls motionless. The mass in the center of the chamber had vanished, leaving behind only darkness. Dracos lay beside me, his breathing shallow but steady. 
We had done it. We had disrupted the core, broken the creature's control. But at what cost? I didn't know. But as I stood, my body aching with every movement, I knew one thing for certain. This wasn't over. Not yet. I jolted awake, gasping for breath, my lungs burning as though I'd been holding on to life too long. The silence was overwhelming, like a void that stretched infinitely in all directions. No hum, no whispers, just the cold stillness of a ship that had gone quiet. I couldn't remember how long I had been out. Days? Hours? It didn't matter. What mattered was that I had to move. My muscles ached, joints stiff as if I had been frozen in place. But pain meant I was still alive, and that was enough for now. Dracos lay on the ground beside me, unconscious but breathing. His chest rose and fell, albeit shallowly, but he was there. I knelt beside him, shaking him gently. Dracos, get up. My voice was low, barely a whisper. Any louder, and I feared it would break the silence in a way that couldn't be undone. He stirred, his eyes fluttering open. For a moment, they were blank, as though his mind had slipped away into the dark corners of whatever nightmare we'd fallen into. But then he saw me, and the panic in his gaze subsided, replaced by confusion. What happened? he asked, his voice hoarse, like he hadn't spoken in days. I don't know, but we did it. The core's gone. Draco sat up, wincing as he moved. He looked around the chamber, his brow furrowing as he took in the emptiness. Where, where is everything? The question echoed in the chamber, bouncing off walls that no longer pulsed with life. The ship, or whatever was left of it, had gone dead. No more living walls, no more whispers, just cold, sterile metal stretching into the darkness. But there was something wrong. The stillness wasn't natural. It felt forced, like the calm before a storm, like something was holding its breath, waiting for us to make the next move. We need to keep going, I said, my voice steady, even though my heart pounded in my chest. Whatever we did, it's not over. Dracos looked at me, his face pale, but there was a glint of determination in his eyes. He nodded slowly, pushing himself to his feet. What now? I didn't have an answer, not one I could articulate, anyway. But something deep inside me, something primal, told me that this was just the beginning. We had cut off the head of the beast, but its body was still thrashing, still alive somewhere beneath the surface. We find the bridge, I said after a pause. We need to take control of the ship. Dracos let out a bitter laugh. Control of the ship. We don't even know if it's still a ship. For all we know, this thing could be collapsing in on itself. He wasn't wrong. The ship had morphed so much since we'd boarded twisting into something far removed from its original purpose. But I didn't care. We couldn't just sit here waiting for whatever came next. We had to act. I moved toward the far side of the chamber, searching for some kind of exit. The walls were no longer shifting, no longer responding to our presence. They were just metal now, cold, lifeless metal. But I could feel it. Something pulsed beneath the surface, a faint vibration that wasn't quite gone. The creature wasn't dead, not completely. Dracos joined me, and together we searched the walls, running our hands over the cold steel, looking for a seam, a doorway, anything that could lead us out. After what felt like an eternity, my fingers brushed against something, a faint indentation, barely visible in the dim light. I pressed it, and with a low hiss, a panel slid open, revealing a narrow corridor beyond. The corridor was dark the lights flickering weakly as though the ship was struggling to maintain power. But it was a way forward. Let's go, I said, stepping through the opening without looking back. We moved through the corridor in silence, the only sound the soft thud of our boots against the metal floor. The air was thick with tension, every step carrying the weight of uncertainty. I didn't know what we would find ahead but every instinct I had screamed that we were walking into something far worse than what we had left behind. As we walked, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched. It wasn't the same oppressive presence we had felt before, the whispers in the walls, the living ship bending to its will. This was different, subtler, but no less unsettling. Do you feel that? Dracos asked, 
his voice barely audible. I nodded, not trusting myself to speak. It wasn't just the feeling of being watched. There was something else, something deeper, a pressure in the air, like the ship itself was holding its breath, waiting for something to happen. We reached the end of the corridor, where a large bulkhead blocked our path. There was no visible control panel, no obvious way to open it. But as we approached, the bulkhead slid open with a soft hiss, revealing a massive chamber beyond. The bridge? It was unlike anything I had ever seen. The room was vast, stretching out into the darkness, with rows of consoles and control stations arranged in a semicircle around a massive central platform. But the consoles were dark, lifeless, as though the ship had long since given up trying to maintain control. In the center of the platform stood a single figure. It was humanoid in shape, but there was something off about it. Its skin was pale, almost translucent, and its eyes glowed faintly in the dim light. It stood perfectly still, as if waiting for us to approach. Dracos took a step back, his hand moving instinctively to the sidearm at his hip. What the hell is that? I didn't answer. I wasn't sure I could. But I knew one thing for certain. This figure, whatever it was, was not part of the crew. It was something else. Something older. Something far more dangerous. The figure turned its head slowly, its glowing eyes locking onto mine. For a moment, we stood there, staring at each other in silence. Then, without warning, it spoke. You have come far, it said, its voice soft but clear, echoing through the chamber like a distant whisper. But you do not belong here. Dracos took another step back, his hand tightening around his weapon. What do you mean we don't belong here? We're the only ones left. The figure tilted its head, as if considering his words. You are not the first to set foot on this ship, and you will not be the last. I took a step forward, my heart pounding in my chest. What are you? The figure smiled, a slow, unsettling grin that sent a chill down my spine. I am what remains, the last vestige of what once was. What once was, I repeated, my mind racing to piece together the fragments of information. What are you talking about? The figure's smile widened. This ship, it was not always like this. Once, it was a vessel of knowledge, a beacon of hope for those who sought to understand the universe. But time has a way of corrupting even the purest of intentions. I frowned, trying to make sense of the words. What happened to the crew? The figure's expression darkened. They succumbed to the ship, to the power it offered. They became one with it, lost in the endless hunger that drives it forward. Dracos took a step forward, his voice filled with anger. And what about us? What do you want from us? The figure's eyes glowed brighter, and for a moment, I thought I saw something flicker behind them, something ancient, something terrifying. I want nothing from you, it said. But the ship, it is hungry, and it will take what it needs. I felt a surge of panic rising in my chest, but I forced it down, keeping my voice steady. We stopped it. We destroyed the core. The figure laughed, a soft, eerie sound that sent a shiver down my spine. You disrupted it, but you cannot destroy what is already eternal. Dracos raised his weapon, his hands shaking. Then what do we do? How do we stop this? The figure's smile faded, replaced by a look of cold indifference. There is no stopping it. There is only survival, and even that is temporary. I stared at the figure, my mind racing, searching for some kind of solution, some way out of this nightmare. But the more I thought, the more I realized the truth. The ship wasn't just a vessel. It was a trap. A living, breathing organism that consumed everything in its path. And we were just the latest in a long line of victims. The figure took a step back, its glowing eyes never leaving mine. You cannot escape, it whispered, its voice barely audible. But you can delay the inevitable. Dracos glanced at me, his face pale. What do we do? I didn't have an answer, not one that made sense, anyway. But I knew one thing for certain, we couldn't stay here. We had to move, had to keep pushing forward, no matter the cost. Come on, I said, my voice low and steady. 
We need to find a way off this ship. Dracos hesitated for a moment, then nodded slowly, lowering his weapon. Together, we turned and walked away from the figure, our footsteps echoing through the empty chamber. The silence felt heavier now, thick, almost tactile, like it was pressing against the skin. Draco's footsteps mirrored mine, hollow echoes on the cold metallic floor. Neither of us spoke as we moved deeper into the bowels of the ship, but the tension hung in the air like a curse that couldn't be shaken. We were not alone. I could feel the ship stirring again, though not as it had before. There were no more whispers in the walls, no illusions or living constructs to confuse our minds. It was subtle, a pressure in the air, a force that had retreated to the shadows, but never fully disappeared. It watched, waited, and bided its time. This ship was alive, alive in a way no human or alien biology could explain. The creature at the bridge had called it hungry. And it didn't take much to understand what that meant now. I glanced at Dracos, whose face was pale, his eyes darting toward every darkened corner. He felt it too. What are we doing? His voice was hoarse, strained. We find a way off this thing, I replied, my voice cold and unyielding, as much for my own sake as for his. But the words felt hollow. There was no exit. That much I could sense. Dracos' breathing quickened. We need a plan. This isn't like anything we've faced before. It's smarter. He let out a nervous laugh that echoed in the vast, empty corridor. How do we fight something that doesn't die? I didn't answer because I didn't know. There was no precedent for this. We had burned out its core, severed its immediate control. But the ship itself, no, the entity, had simply adjusted, adapted. I could feel it calculating, evolving with each step we took, like a predator learning from its prey. As we continued down the hall, a sudden sound, like metal groaning under pressure, echoed behind us. I froze. Draco stiffened beside me, his hand instinctively going for his sidearm. We turned slowly, our backs pressed together, scanning the corridor. Nothing. Just the dead air. But the groaning sound intensified. The walls began to tremble slightly, and for a moment, I thought the entire structure was about to collapse. But that wasn't it. The walls were alive again. Slowly, faintly, they pulsed. The hunger had returned. This isn't right, Dracos muttered. He stepped back, his eyes wide, scanning the walls like they might spring to life and swallow us whole. I felt the same. The ship wasn't just reactivating. It was feeding. Suddenly, a distant screech tore through the corridor, long and distorted, like metal tearing apart. My blood ran cold. Whatever had made that sound wasn't far away. Move, I shouted, breaking into a sprint. Dracos followed without hesitation. The corridor twisted and bent as we ran. The ship was reshaping itself. No matter how far we went, the path ahead seemed to change with each glance, like a maze that was shifting around us. Dracos cursed behind me, but I didn't slow down. There was no time for fear. The hunger was closing in. We rounded a corner, and I skidded to a halt, nearly crashing into the wall. A massive chamber lay before us, one that hadn't been there before. It was vast and empty, the kind of space that felt wrong in its silence, as though it had been waiting for us all along. At the far end of the chamber was an enormous door, built from a strange alloy that shimmered in the low light. It pulsed faintly, not like the living walls, but like something locked behind it was drawing breath. Do you feel that? Dracos whispered. I nodded. The door was more than just a barrier, it was alive too, and whatever lay beyond it was something I had no desire to meet. The ship groaned again, and the screeching returned, louder this time. Close. Too close. There was no choice. We had to go forward. I sprinted toward the door, Dracos on my heels, and as we neared it, the pulsing intensified. It seemed to respond to our presence, rippling like liquid metal. Without thinking, I slammed my hand against it. A violent shock rippled through my body, forcing me to my knees. My mind exploded with images, visions, fragments of memories that weren't mine. A world consumed by light, swallowed whole by the hunger. Civilizations snuffed out, their cries echoing into the abyss. I saw ships, thousands of them, 
all part of the same organism, all connected, feeding off the remnants of worlds like parasites. And then I saw Earth. The hunger was coming. With a strangled cry, I wrenched my hand away from the door, gasping for air. Dracos grabbed my shoulder, shaking me, his eyes wide with panic. What the hell was that? he demanded, his voice trembling. What did you see? I struggled to find the words, but none came. I had seen too much. I had felt the hunger, felt its endless, insatiable need to consume everything in its path. And now it knew us. We were part of it. Dracos was still talking, but I couldn't hear him. My mind was racing, pieces of the puzzle falling into place. The ship wasn't just alive, it was a conduit, a harbinger of something far worse. And it was coming for us, for Earth, for everything. Suddenly, the door began to shift. The shimmering surface parted like water, revealing a narrow passageway beyond. It beckoned us forward, a silent invitation that felt more like a trap. We have to go, I said, my voice barely a whisper. There's no time. Dracos looked at me, his face pale and drawn, but he didn't argue. We stepped through the passageway, and as we did, the door sealed behind us, leaving us in near total darkness. The air inside the passage was thick, oppressive, like walking through a storm cloud. Every step felt heavier, like the gravity had shifted. The walls around us pulsed faintly, but the hunger wasn't in the walls anymore. It was all around us, pressing against our minds, gnawing at the edges of our thoughts. Draco stumbled beside me, cursing under his breath. He was struggling, I could tell. Whatever we were facing, it was breaking him down, piece by piece. I can't, he gasped, his voice strained. I can't think. It's in my head. I grabbed his arm, pulling him forward. Don't listen to it. Just keep moving. But I could feel it too. The hunger was more than just a force. It was sentient, probing our minds, searching for weakness. Every step forward felt like walking into a trap, but stopping meant death or worse. The passage opened into another chamber, smaller this time, but no less disturbing. In the center of the room stood a massive structure, a monolith of sorts, pulsing with a faint, sickly light. It was ancient, covered in strange symbols that I couldn't decipher, but there was no mistaking its purpose. The hunger was born here. This was its source. Draco stared at the monolith, his face pale, his eyes wide with horror. What? What is this? I didn't answer. I couldn't. The truth was too terrible to comprehend. This was no ship. This was a feeding ground, and we were standing in the center of it. The hunger wasn't just a force, it was a creation, a weapon designed to consume entire worlds, and it had been set loose upon the galaxy. Suddenly, the monolith pulsed brighter, and the walls around us began to tremble. The ship was waking up, fully now, the hunger had found us, and it would not be denied. We need to destroy it, I said, my voice tight with fear. Dracos nodded, but there was no confidence in his eyes. How? How do we destroy something like this? I didn't know, but we had to try. We couldn't let this thing reach Earth. I moved toward the monolith, my heart pounding in my chest. As I reached out to touch it, a sudden wave of energy shot through me, knocking me back. My vision blurred, and for a moment, I saw nothing but darkness. And then I heard it. The hunger, speaking, not in words, but in thoughts, images. It showed me the destruction of entire worlds, the collapse of civilizations, all consumed by its endless appetite. And it showed me Earth, our home, our world, next in line. I screamed, but no sound came out. The hunger was inside me now, tearing at my mind, ripping me apart from the inside out. I fell to the ground, gasping for air. Dracos was beside me, shouting something, but I couldn't hear him. The hunger was too loud, too powerful. And then, just as quickly as it had begun, it stopped. I blinked, dazed, my vision slowly returning. The monolith was still there, pulsing faintly, but something had changed. The hunger had retreated, pulled back into the shadows, we need to go, I said, my voice shaking. Now. Dracos didn't argue. We turned and ran, 
the ship groaning and shifting around us, the walls pulsing with life once again. But we weren't running from the ship anymore. We were running from something far worse. Our footsteps echoed in the narrow passage as we fled, the ship shifting and groaning behind us. Each turn felt like a dead end that hadn't been there moments before. The hunger wasn't done with us. It was merely biding its time, pulling us deeper into its web. Draco's breathing was labored, panic slipping into his voice. We're running in circles. Man, it's toying with us. I didn't respond. There wasn't time. Every instinct told me to move forward, to put as much distance between us and the monolith as possible. Whatever the hunger was planning, it wasn't going to stop until it had everything. Ahead of us, the passage began to widen, the pulsing of the walls growing faint, as if the hunger had withdrawn to let us think we were free. But I knew better. Watch your step, I said quietly. The ground beneath us had changed. What had once been cold metal now felt brittle, as though we were treading on thin ice. Every step produced a soft crunch, and with each one, I couldn't shake the feeling that something below was watching, waiting. Draco swallowed hard. Where do we go from here? The shuttle? We have to find the others. There were no others. I didn't need to say it out loud. We both knew it. The crew was gone, swallowed by whatever force had taken the ship. We were alone in the belly of a living machine, a construct that had long since devoured the minds that had once controlled it. I glanced back at Dracos, who was still looking for a way out, his eyes darting toward every passage we passed. I could see his fear, his desperation. It wasn't just the ship. It was the knowledge that we had come face to face with something far beyond our comprehension, and we were powerless against it. We're going to die here, aren't we? He muttered, more to himself than to me. Before I could answer, a sharp, violent tremor shook the ground. The brittle surface beneath us cracked, spiderwebbing in all directions. I stumbled forward, barely keeping my balance as the walls shifted once again, opening up into another chamber. This one was different. It wasn't part of the ship. At least, not in the same way the other rooms had been. It was darker, almost cavernous, and the air had a thick, metallic taste. The walls were covered in strange symbols, alien inscriptions that seemed to pulse with the same sickly light as the monolith. In the center of the chamber stood a towering structure, similar to the monolith, but smaller, more concentrated. Tendrils of energy pulsed from it, stretching out across the floor like roots. It was ancient, older than the ship itself, and there was a feeling of finality to it, as though we had reached the heart of the hunger. Draco stepped forward his eyes wide with disbelief. What? What is this place? I didn't have an answer. But the hunger was here, stronger than ever. I could feel it, pressing against my mind, searching for a way in. It wasn't just a force of nature, it had intent, purpose, and we were standing in its sanctum. The tremors grew stronger, the walls vibrating as if something massive was moving beneath us. Dracos looked at me, his face pale, his eyes pleading. What do we do? I stared at the structure in the center of the room, my mind racing. The hunger had shown me its plan, the destruction of Earth, the consumption of everything we had ever known. But it hadn't shown me how to stop it. And then it hit me. The hunger had retreated when I touched the monolith. It had drawn back, almost like it was afraid. We need to destroy that, I said, pointing at the central structure. Draco shook his head, his voice trembling. Destroy it? How? We don't even know what it is. It's the core. It's feeding the ship. If we destroy it, we might be able to shut the whole thing down. Or we could trigger something worse, he shot back. This thing is alive, and you want to poke it. I didn't have time to argue. The ground beneath us shifted again, and a deep, resonant hum filled the air. The walls were moving, reshaping themselves into sharp, jagged edges. The chamber was closing in on us. Now, I shouted, rushing toward the structure. Dracos hesitated for a moment before following, his fear giving way to grim determination. Together, we approached the central structure, the tendrils of energy sparking at our feet. I could feel the hunger pushing against me, resisting, but it was weakening. It knew what we were trying to do. How do we destroy it? 
Dracos yelled over the rising noise. I didn't have an answer, but there was no turning back now. I reached out, my hand trembling, and touched the surface of the structure. Pain. Unimaginable pain. It shot through my body like a thousand volts of electricity, burning through my veins, tearing at my mind. I could feel the hunger latching onto me, pulling me into its depths, dragging me into an endless abyss of consumption and destruction. It showed me more, more than I could ever comprehend. Entire galaxies swallowed whole, civilizations erased from existence, all feeding into the endless maw of the hunger. And then I saw something else. A light. Faint, distant, but there. It was weak, almost imperceptible, but it was fighting back, pushing against the hunger's grasp. It was the ship, no, not the ship, but something within it. Something that had been there all along, buried deep beneath the layers of the hunger's corruption. I grabbed onto it with everything I had, pulling myself back from the edge. The pain intensified, my vision blurred, and for a moment, I thought I was going to lose myself. But then, the light grew stronger, pushing back the darkness. With a final, desperate surge of strength, I slammed my fist into the structure. The tendrils of energy sparked violently, and the entire room shook as the core began to crack. Draco screamed something, but I couldn't hear him over the deafening roar that filled the chamber. The walls around us began to collapse, the ground splitting open beneath our feet. The hunger was fighting back, trying to protect itself, but it was too late. The core shattered. For a brief moment, everything went silent. The pulsing stopped, the tremors ceased, and the oppressive weight of the hunger lifted. It was as if the entire ship had taken a breath, and then it exhaled. The chamber exploded in a violent burst of energy, throwing us both to the ground. I hit the floor hard, my vision going dark for a moment. When I opened my eyes, the room was in chaos. The walls were crumbling, the ceiling collapsing in on itself, and the floor was splitting open to reveal the dark void below. Move, I shouted, grabbing Dracos by the arm and pulling him to his feet. We sprinted toward the exit, dodging falling debris and collapsing walls. The ship was tearing itself apart, the hunger lashing out in its final moments. But it was dying. I could feel it. We stumbled into the passageway, just as the chamber behind us collapsed entirely. The ground shook violently, and I barely managed to keep my balance as we ran. The ship was in its death throes, and if we didn't get out soon, we would go down with it. How do we get out? Draco shouted, his voice barely audible over the deafening noise. I didn't know. The ship was collapsing around us, the passages shifting and closing off. But there had to be a way. There always was. As we rounded another corner, I saw it, a distant light at the end of the corridor. It wasn't the cold, artificial glow of the ship's interior. It was different, warm, inviting. That way, I shouted, pointing toward the light. We ran, our legs burning, our lungs screaming for air. The ship groaned around us, the walls closing in. But we kept moving, pushing forward with everything we had. And then, we were through. We stumbled out into the light, gasping for breath, and collapsed onto the cold, hard ground. Behind us, the ship groaned one last time, and then it was gone, swallowed by the dark. We lay on the ground for what felt like an eternity, gasping for air, as the silence settled in. The oppressive noise of the collapsing ship faded, leaving only the distant echoes of destruction behind us. My mind reeled from everything we had just escaped, but there was no time to process it, no moment to rest. The warmth of the light that had saved us now cast long shadows on the jagged rocks around us. It was dimmer here, less blinding, but still different from anything inside the ship. I forced myself to sit up, my muscles aching, my body screaming for rest. Draco sat nearby, staring ahead with a haunted expression. What the hell just happened, he muttered, his voice hollow. I didn't answer immediately. My thoughts were still jumbled, trying to make sense of the fragmented images and sensations from the encounter with the hunger. The core, the light, it was all still too raw, too incomprehensible. We had destroyed something, but in doing so, we had unleashed forces far beyond our control. And now, here we were, wherever here was. 
I stood up, shakily at first, and surveyed our surroundings. We were in an open expanse, a barren, rocky landscape that stretched far into the horizon. The sky above us was a deep, unnatural shade of purple, streaked with swirling clouds that seemed alive, pulsating with faint energy. There were no stars, no sun, yet the entire area was bathed in a strange, ethereal glow. Dracos rose to his feet, still shaky from the ordeal. This place, it's not the ship, is it? No, I replied quietly, shaking my head. We're somewhere else, but I don't know where. He swallowed, looking around nervously. You think we're safe? I didn't answer. The truth was, I wasn't sure of anything anymore. We had destroyed the hunger's core, but whatever power it had tapped into was far from dead. There was a presence here, an invisible force watching us, waiting. The hairs on the back of my neck stood on end, the same feeling I had in the ship before it all went wrong. We can't stay here, I said finally, my voice low. There's something about this place. Dracos nodded, though his eyes remained fixed on the horizon. So, what do we do? There's no ship, no way back. I clenched my fists, trying to think clearly. This place, wherever it was, wasn't just a random part of the ship's collapse. The light we had followed wasn't accidental. It had guided us here, to this exact spot, for a reason. But what reason? We keep moving, I said finally. There's something out there, I can feel it. We need to figure out what this place is. We began to walk, our footsteps crunching on the uneven ground. The rocky landscape stretched on for miles, but the odd glow ahead seemed to pull us forward. Draco stayed close behind, his eyes scanning the sky warily. There was no wind, no sound except our breathing and the rhythmic crunch of our boots. After what felt like hours of walking, a faint structure began to appear in the distance. At first, it was just a shadow on the horizon, but as we drew closer, it became clear that it was a tower, tall, spindly, and impossibly ancient. It jutted out from the barren ground like a monument to something long forgotten, its surface etched with symbols similar to those in the ship's core. Draco stopped beside me, staring up at the tower. What do you think this is? I didn't know. But the symbols, the faint hum of energy that radiated from the structure, it was all connected. Somehow, this place, the ship, the hunger, it was all part of a larger design. And this tower was a piece of the puzzle. Let's find out, I said, stepping toward it. The ground beneath us shifted slightly as we approached the tower, the air around us thickening with static electricity. It was as though the very atmosphere was charged with power, vibrating with unseen forces. I could feel it in my bones, the same pressure that had pressed against my mind back in the ship. The hunger had been a harbinger of something greater, something ancient. At the base of the tower, a doorway stood open, its frame covered in the same alien inscriptions. Dracos hesitated, glancing at me for reassurance, but I moved forward without a word. There was no turning back now. Whatever awaited us inside, it was the only way forward. As we crossed the threshold, the world outside seemed to vanish. The light, the landscape, the sky, it all disappeared in an instant, replaced by darkness. For a moment, I thought we had stepped into nothingness, but then the floor beneath us began to glow, revealing a spiraling staircase that descended into the depths of the tower. Great, Dracos muttered under his breath. More stairs. I shot him a look, and we began the descent in silence. The air grew colder as we descended, the glow from the steps our only source of light. The further we went, the more the weight of the tower pressed down on us, a suffocating force that seemed to grow stronger with every step. After what felt like an eternity, the staircase ended in a massive chamber, its walls covered in more of the alien symbols. In the center of the room stood a massive stone slab, and above it, suspended in the air, was a shimmering orb of energy pulsing, alive, and vibrating with power. Draco stared at the orb, his eyes wide with awe and fear. What is that? I don't know, I whispered, stepping closer to it. The energy radiating from the orb was immense, more powerful than anything I had felt before. It was ancient, older than the hunger, older than the ship, maybe even older than humanity itself. And then I felt it, the presence. 
It wasn't just watching us. It was inside the orb, waiting for us to get closer. Don't touch it, Dracos warned, but it was too late. The moment my hand brushed the edge of the orb, everything went white. The world around me disappeared, and I found myself floating in an endless void. There was no up or down, no sense of time or space, just emptiness. And then, out of the void, a voice spoke. You have seen the hunger, but you do not yet understand. The voice was neither male nor female, neither human nor alien. It was something else, something beyond comprehension. I tried to speak, but my voice was swallowed by the void. The hunger was only a shadow, a fragment of the true force that binds this universe. You have touched its core, but you have not seen its true form. That will come soon. The void shifted, and I felt the presence draw closer, surrounding me, enveloping me in its cold embrace. Your world is but one of many. The hunger is coming, and it will not stop. You cannot stop it. A flash of images filled my mind, earth, burning, crumbling under the weight of the hunger's advance. Cities destroyed, oceans consumed, billions of lives extinguished in a heartbeat. But you will fight, the voice continued, because that is your nature, and in fighting, you will become what the hunger fears the most. Before I could comprehend what that meant, the void collapsed around me, and I was back in the chamber, gasping for air. The orb had disappeared, and the room was silent once more. Dracos knelt beside me, his face pale. What happened? What did you see? I couldn't find the words to explain. I had seen the future, our future. The hunger was coming for Earth, and it wouldn't stop until everything was gone. We have to stop it, I whispered, my voice trembling. We have to find a way to stop it. Dracos nodded, his expression grim. How? I looked up at the stone slab in the center of the room. There, carved into its surface, was a map, an intricate web of lines and symbols that stretched across the galaxy. At its center was Earth, surrounded by a swirling vortex of destruction. We start here, I said, pointing at the map. This is the key. We find this, and maybe, just maybe, we can stop the hunger before it reaches Earth. Draco stared at the map, his eyes filled with a mixture of hope and dread. Then let's get moving. We don't have much time. We turned and began our ascent out of the tower, knowing that what awaited us beyond this place was far darker and more dangerous than anything we had faced so far. And the hunger, it was still out there, watching, waiting. The climb back to the surface felt interminable, each step heavier than the last. The map burned in my mind, a path that twisted through the stars, leading us to an unknown fate. With every pulse of energy I had felt from the orb, I realized we were no longer just participants in a battle for survival. We had become the vanguard against an impending doom. Dracos remained close, his presence a steadying force as we ascended the staircase. The atmosphere shifted with each passing moment, the air thickening with tension. The reality of our situation pressed against us like a heavy fog. We weren't just fighting for our lives, we were fighting for the very essence of existence. Emerging from the tower, we stood once more in the eerie light of that alien landscape. The horizon remained a sea of uncertainty, but now, the faint glow of the orb and its message guided us. Where do we start? Dracos asked, scanning the surroundings, looking for any hint or direction. I glanced back at the tower, its presence looming behind us. The map showed multiple points, but there has to be a focal point, a starting location where we can begin to piece this together. Suddenly, the ground trembled beneath our feet, and the unsettling sense of being watched returned, stronger than ever. The silence shattered as distant roars echoed through the air. I turned sharply, instinctively reaching for the weapon at my side, now fully aware that whatever resided in this realm would not take kindly to our intrusion. Did you hear that? Dracos whispered, his eyes wide with fear. Yes, I replied, every nerve in my body heightened. We need to move. Now. We sprinted away from the tower, every instinct screaming at us to escape. The roars grew louder, accompanied by the sounds of something heavy crashing against the ground. 
It felt like the very earth was protesting our presence, and I couldn't shake the feeling that whatever hunted us was closing in. As we ran, I scanned the horizon, searching for a landmark or a hint of direction. The landscape blurred into a chaotic mix of shadows and light, each turn revealing new horrors. I could feel the hunger lurking behind us, a relentless predator that thrived on fear. Over there, Draco shouted, pointing toward a cluster of jagged rocks jutting out of the ground like teeth. We can hide there. We dove behind the rocks, the cool stone pressing against my back as I tried to catch my breath. The sounds of pursuit grew closer, the roars echoing like thunder, reverberating through my chest. My heart raced, pumping adrenaline through my veins, but there was no room for panic. We had to stay focused. What do we do? Dracos asked, his voice trembling as he peered around the rocks. If we can't find that focal point, we're done for. We can't let it corner us, I replied, scanning the landscape. We need to find a way to understand this place, to learn its secrets. The ground shook again, more violently this time, and a shadow loomed overhead. I looked up just in time to see a massive creature soaring across the sky, its wingspan stretching wide enough to block the dim light. It glided effortlessly, a predator surveying its territory. That thing is huge, Dracos breathed, his voice barely a whisper. We pressed ourselves further against the rocks, hearts pounding in unison. The creature banked sharply, its piercing eyes scanning the terrain below. My instincts told me it was intelligent, aware of its surroundings, and it was hunting for us. The creature circled, and I felt an icy dread settle in my stomach. We were outmatched, but we couldn't lose hope. If there was a way to stop the hunger, we had to find it, even if it meant facing whatever this world threw at us. As the creature continued its search, I noticed something glinting in the distance, a flash of light reflecting off something metallic. I gestured to Dracos, and we shifted our position slightly, trying to get a better view. What is that? he asked, squinting. I don't know, but it might be our best chance, I replied, still keeping an eye on the beast above. We need to get to it. The creature swooped down closer to the ground, and I felt a surge of urgency. We had no choice. We had to make a break for it. On three, I said, my voice steady despite the fear coursing through me. One, two, three. We bolted from behind the rocks, sprinting toward the glint of metal. The creature immediately turned its attention toward us, letting out a bone-chilling roar that echoed across the landscape. Every muscle in my body screamed as we ran, the ground shaking with the force of the beast's approach. I could feel its hot breath on my neck, the weight of its presence looming behind us. I risked a glance back. The creature was gaining on us, its massive form cutting through the air with terrifying speed. Keep moving, Dracos shouted, urging me onward. We reached the metallic structure, a fragment of what appeared to be a ship its surface covered in strange symbols, much like those in the tower. It was battered and old, yet it still hummed with a faint energy. This could be the key to our survival. I reached for the side of the ship, my fingers brushing against the cool metal. We can use this. If we can figure out how it works, it might give us an edge. Dracos glanced back, panic flaring in his eyes. It's almost here. I stepped inside the ship, immediately feeling a rush of energy wash over me. The interior was dimly lit, panels flashing with life as if reacting to our presence. There was a control panel at the center, covered in the same alien symbols. Help me, I called to Dracos, who joined me inside, his breath coming in quick gasps. We need to activate this thing. I studied the panel, trying to decipher the symbols. They swirled together, forming a pattern that felt familiar yet distant, echoing the imagery from the orb. Here, I pointed to a section of the panel that pulsed with energy. Press that. Draco slammed his hand on the indicated spot, and the ship shuddered, the hum growing louder. The windows showed the outside world blurring as the creature approached, its shadow looming ever larger. Is it working? Draco shouted, fear creeping into his voice. I think so, I replied, watching as the symbols on the panel aligned, forming a constellation that echoed the layout from the tower. We just have to. 
Before I could finish, the ship lurched violently, knocking us both off our feet. The control panel lit up, and alarms began blaring, a cacophony of sound that nearly drowned out the roar of the beast outside. Hold on, I yelled, trying to regain my footing. We're about to find out what this thing can do. Another violent jolt rocked the ship, and suddenly the ground beneath us began to shift and dissolve. The creature's roar turned into a mix of confusion and rage as the landscape warped around it, the portal to another realm opening wide. I gripped the edge of the control panel, heart racing. Now, we need to steer it. The symbols flashed brightly, and with a surge of energy, the ship shot forward, pulling us out of the darkness and into a vibrant expanse of stars. The transition was jarring and for a moment I felt weightless, suspended between two worlds. And then we were through. The ship stabilized, and we found ourselves soaring through a vast cosmos filled with swirling colors and dazzling lights. Planets and celestial bodies drifted by, each one a reminder of how small we truly were in this infinite expanse. What just happened? Dracos asked, his voice a mix of awe and disbelief. I think we escaped, I replied, trying to catch my breath. But this isn't over. The hunger is still out there. We were in a new realm, but the presence of the hunger lingered at the back of my mind like a dark shadow. I took a moment to breathe in the surreal beauty of our surroundings before refocusing on the control panel. Let's see where we are, I said, fingers dancing across the symbols as I attempted to decipher their meanings. The ship hummed in response and a holographic map flickered to life before us, displaying our current location among the stars. Look, Dracos pointed at a glowing point on the map. That's Earth. We're still close enough to make a difference. I felt a rush of determination swell within me. If we can find a way to link back to the tower's focal point, we might have a shot at understanding the hunger and how to stop it. Then let's chart a course, Dracos replied, urgency in his tone. As I set the navigation, the ship vibrated with energy, and we soared through the cosmos, heading toward the bright blue dot of Earth. With every passing moment, the weight of our mission pressed down on me, but I also felt the flicker of hope. We weren't just survivors anymore. We were the reckoning against the hunger, the key to our salvation. But as we hurtled through space, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching us from the shadows, waiting for its moment to strike. The hunger had not been vanquished, it had simply changed its tactics, and now it knew we were coming for it. We'll need to be ready, I said, voice steady as I glanced at Dracos. Whatever waits for us back home won't take kindly to our return. I'm ready, he said, resolve hardening his features. We have to fight back. Together, we steeled ourselves for the journey ahead, ready to face whatever challenges awaited us on Earth. The hunger may have been formidable, but we were not without our own strengths. We were two souls bound by a mission, determined to uncover the truth and reclaim our home. As we sped through the starry void, I felt a surge of anticipation, an inkling that the answers we sought lay just beyond the horizon. The path of shadows was far from over, and we would confront it together. The ship glided through the star-speckled void each pulsating light a reminder of the fragility of our existence. The metallic hull hummed softly, a comforting sound amid the uncertainty that lay ahead. I could feel the weight of the orb still pressing against my thoughts, whispering fragments of knowledge and warnings. We were not merely flying toward Earth. We were embarking on a quest that could either save us or plunge us deeper into chaos. Draco stood at the control panel, his eyes fixed on the glowing holographic map, We'll reach the outer atmosphere in ten minutes, he announced, his voice steady but laced with urgency. We need to prepare for whatever awaits us. I nodded, my mind racing through the possibilities. What had changed since we left? Had the hunger spread? Were there others who understood the threat? I stepped closer, studying the flickering displays. The symbols from the ship were almost hypnotic, swirling and shifting like a living organism. Each one seemed to pulse with energy, resonating with the thoughts that bounced around in my head. We should scan for any anomalies, I suggested, my fingers brushing the panel. Anything that might indicate the hunger's presence or activity. 
Dracos focused intently on the controls, fingers flying over the console. The ship responded, a series of soft beeps signaling that it was processing our commands. The holographic display shifted, revealing a series of spectral waves cascading across the map. I could see the planet below, its surface a mix of vibrant greens and browns, yet marred by dark patches that hinted at decay and unrest. Look at that, Draco said, pointing at a cluster of anomalies near the equator. What do you think it is? I leaned closer, feeling a chill creep down my spine. It's too concentrated to be natural. If the hunger has manifested here, we might be in more trouble than we thought. Should we change course? he asked, worry flickering in his eyes. No, I said, squaring my shoulders. We need to confront this head on. If the hunger has taken root on earth, we can't run from it. We have to understand it. With a deep breath, I focused on the map, mentally preparing myself for the confrontation ahead. There was no time for fear. We had to act. I glanced at Dracos, whose determination mirrored my own. Let's do this. As we descended through the atmosphere, the ship vibrated, and I could feel the rush of energy enveloping us. The world below grew closer, a swirling mass of color and texture that evoked memories I had thought long buried. The landscape unfurled like an ancient scroll, revealing the familiar terrain I had once called home. But now, it looked different, contorted, as if a shadow had swept over it. We're entering the landing zone, Dracos announced, his voice tinged with excitement and trepidation. Prepare for impact. The ship shook violently as we broke through the clouds, the ground rushing up to meet us. I gripped the edge of the console, my heart racing as we neared the surface. The ship settled with a jolt, the vibrations dissipating as the engines powered down. We had arrived. We made it, Draco said, a mix of relief and apprehension in his voice. Let's see what we're up against, I replied, gathering my gear as we prepared to disembark. The door hissed open, revealing a world steeped in twilight, shadows creeping across the landscape like tendrils of smoke. We stepped outside, the air thick with tension. The silence was profound, broken only by the rustling of leaves in the wind. I could feel the weight of the atmosphere pressing against us, as if the very air was holding its breath, waiting for something to happen. Where do we start? Dracos asked, scanning the surroundings. I turned, taking in the desolation around us. Trees that once stood tall were twisted and gnarled, their branches reaching like skeletal fingers toward the sky. The ground was littered with debris, remnants of what had once been a thriving world. There, I pointed toward a faint glow in the distance. We need to head toward that light. As we moved through the darkened terrain, unease settled in my stomach. Every rustle, every distant noise felt amplified, as if the shadows themselves were alive, whispering secrets meant to remain hidden. My heart raced, the tension palpable as we approached the source of the glow. The clearing opened up before us, revealing a circular stone structure half buried in the earth. The faint light emanated from the center, flickering like a candle caught in the wind. As we approached, I could see intricate carvings etched into the stones, the same symbols that adorned the orb and the ship. This is it, I breathed, awe mingling with dread. This must be a focal point, one of the places we saw on the map. Draco stepped closer, eyes wide with wonder. It looks ancient. How could it have survived all this? We need to find out, I replied, kneeling before the glowing center. There might be something here that can help us understand the hunger. As I reached out to touch the light, a surge of energy coursed through me, igniting every nerve ending. Images flashed in my mind, visions of a world bathed in darkness, creatures of nightmares prowling the streets, their hunger insatiable. I could feel the weight of despair pressing down, the knowledge that this was the reality we were facing. Suddenly, a sharp gasp tore through the air, and I snapped back to reality. Draco stumbled backward his eyes wide with shock. What was that? Did you see it? I asked, heart racing. The hunger, it's not just an entity. It's a force, a wave of destruction that spreads across worlds. Dracos nodded, his face pale. We need to do something. The light pulsed again, 
and the symbols around us shifted, swirling together like a vortex. I could feel the energy building, and a voice echoed in my mind, a whisper that brushed against the edges of my consciousness. Seek the source. The hunger knows your name. You must confront it. What does that mean? Dracos asked, panic threading through his voice. It means we need to find the heart of the hunger, I replied, determination hardening my resolve. If we can confront it, we might be able to sever its connection to this world. As we stood there, a low rumble echoed through the ground, and the clearing shook violently. I could feel the pull of the energy, drawing me closer to the center. We have to stabilize this place, I said, urgency coursing through me. It's the only way we can channel the energy to confront the hunger. Dracos nodded, determination igniting in his eyes. What do we need to do? Stay with me, I instructed, placing my hands against the glowing center. We need to synchronize our energy with this focal point. It might amplify our strength. Dracos moved to my side, placing his hands over mine. As we focused our energy, the light intensified, bathing us in its glow. The symbols around us flared to life, resonating with the power we were channeling. I closed my eyes, letting the energy flow through me, visualizing the connection between us and the source. The visions return, clearer now, the hunger looming over the world, a dark cloud threatening to engulf everything in its path. But there was something else, a glimmer of hope, a counterforce that pulsed with light. You are the light in the dark, the voice echoed in my mind. Embrace it. With that thought, I felt the energy surge, pushing against the darkness that threatened to swallow us whole. My heart raced, and I could sense the presence of the hunger, a malevolent force lurking just beyond the edge of our reality. The clearing erupted in blinding light, and the ground trembled as if the very fabric of the world was being torn apart. The energy twisted around us, forming a protective barrier as shadows clawed at the edges. Hold on, I shouted to Dracos, who gripped my arm tightly. The shadows grew more aggressive, swirling around us, their whispers rising to a deafening crescendo. It was as if they were trying to claw their way into our minds, feeding off our fear and desperation. I focused on the light, letting it fill every crevice of my being. The energy surged again, and I felt a powerful wave radiate from the focal point, pushing back against the encroaching darkness. For a moment, I could see it, the heart of the hunger, a mass of shadows and despair, pulsing with a life of its own. That's it, I yelled, a rush of adrenaline fueling my resolve. We need to amplify the light, channel everything we have into it. Dracos nodded, his expression fierce. Let's do it. Together, we focused our energy on the light, letting it flow through us and into the ground. The clearing erupted in a kaleidoscope of colors, the darkness retreating as the light surged forward. But the hunger was relentless. It surged back, a wave of malice that crashed against our shield. The shadows writhed, clawing at the edges of our protection, seeking to break through. Don't let it in, I shouted, my voice rising above the chaos. We can't let it take us. The light pulsed again, stronger now, and I could feel the power building within me. I focused on the source, visualizing the heart of the hunger, imagining it being pulled into the light, contained and powerless. As we pressed on, I could see Dracos's determination mirrored in my vision. We were in this together, fighting against the darkness. The weight of the hunger pressed against us, but we pushed harder, letting the light expand, enveloping the clearing in a radiant glow. The shadows shrieked, their cries echoing through the air, a cacophony of anguish and rage. But we didn't falter. We pressed forward, channeling every ounce of our strength into the light. And then, with a final surge, the light erupted, a blinding beacon that consumed the shadows. I felt the force of it wash over me, and for a moment I was weightless, suspended in the brilliance. But as quickly as it came, it receded, and I found myself gasping for air. The clearing was still, the darkness dissipated, leaving behind a palpable silence. Did we do it? Dracos asked, his voice trembling. I think so, I replied, still reeling from the surge of energy. But we have to make sure. We need to find the heart of the hunger and destroy it. Where do we start? He questioned, scanning the remnants of the clearing. 
There's bound to be something here, something that tells us where to find it, I said, rising to my feet. As I began to examine the carvings on the stones, a realization struck me. The symbols were not just decorations, they were a map, a guide leading to the source of the hunger. Look at these, I said, tracing my fingers along the intricate designs. They align with the areas we detected earlier. This must be telling us where to go next. Dracos joined me, studying the symbols with a mix of awe and determination. We need to take this back with us. It's our best chance of locating the heart. I nodded, gathering the energy pulsing within me. We can't waste any time. Let's get back to the ship and plot our course. As we made our way back through the shadows of the forest, the silence felt heavy, as if the world was still reeling from our confrontation with the hunger. I could feel the remnants of energy coursing through me, a connection to the light we had unleashed. But the hunger was not defeated. It was merely waiting, lurking in the shadows, watching. We'll confront it head on, I said, resolve hardening within me. We won't back down. Dracos nodded, determination shining in his eyes. Together. Together. That word resonated in my mind, a promise that bound us in the face of darkness. As we reached the ship, the familiar hum of machinery surrounded us, a stark contrast to the eerie quiet outside. Once inside, we set to work, using the holographic interface to map out our next steps. The symbols from the clearing glowed faintly, guiding us as we charted our course. Look here, I said, pointing to a cluster of coordinates. This area aligns with the strongest signal we detected earlier. It's close to where we landed. Dracos leaned over the console, his brow furrowed in concentration. If we can pinpoint the heart of the hunger, we might be able to sever its hold on Earth. With renewed determination, we plotted our course, the ship humming to life as we prepared for the journey ahead. But deep down, I could feel the hunger's presence, a dark shadow looming just beyond our reach. As we launched into the void, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched, that the hunger was aware of our every move. We had only scratched the surface of its true nature, and the confrontation ahead would test us in ways we could not yet comprehend. But we had each other, and that was enough. The ship hummed with energy as we entered hyperspace, streaks of light blurring past the windows, creating a cosmic tapestry that felt both mesmerizing and unsettling. Draco sat at the controls, eyes focused on the holographic display mapping our trajectory. I leaned against the wall, arms crossed, wrestling with the thoughts swirling in my mind. The hunger was still out there, lurking, waiting for its next move, and we were rushing into its domain. Ten minutes to our destination, Dracos announced, his voice steady, yet a hint of tension crept through. Good. We need to be ready for anything, I replied, pacing the cramped confines of the ship. Each step felt heavier than the last as I contemplated the imminent confrontation. Do you think the energy from the focal point will help us? He asked, glancing up from the controls. It has to, I replied, trying to muster confidence. We tapped into something powerful. If we can channel that energy again, we might be able to weaken the hunger. Dracos nodded, his expression serious. We should prepare a strategy. We need to know what we're dealing with. I paused, thinking back to the visions I had seen during our last encounter. Shadows cloaked in darkness, monstrous forms that shifted like smoke. But among those images, there had been glimpses of something else, an opening, a connection perhaps even a weakness. I saw something, I said, pacing again. In the visions, the hunger has a core, a heart, if you will. If we can find it, we might be able to sever its connection to Earth. Where do we start? Dracos asked, his curiosity piqued. The coordinates we identified should lead us to a nexus point, I explained, taking a deep breath. If we're right, it should be where the hunger is most concentrated but we need to stay vigilant. It could be a trap. The ship shuddered, a reminder that we were crossing the threshold between dimensions, leaving behind the familiar and venturing into the unknown. I turned my gaze to the view outside, watching the stars streak by, a reminder of how small we were in the grand scheme of the universe. The vastness felt suffocating, amplifying my anxiety. 
approaching the coordinates, Dracos called, snapping me out of my thoughts. The ship emerged from hyperspace with a violent jolt, and I stumbled against the console, gripping it tightly. Before us lay a dark expanse of space, the stars obscured by swirling clouds of shadow. A massive planet loomed ahead, its surface marred by dark patches that seemed to pulse with an eerie glow. What the hell is that? Dracos muttered, eyes wide. I don't know, I replied, staring in disbelief. But we need to find a way down there. Preparing for atmospheric entry, he said, fingers dancing across the controls. The ship trembled as we adjusted our trajectory, heading toward the planet's surface. As we descended, the atmosphere thickened, obscuring our view further. The ship rattled violently, and I could hear alarms blaring in the background. Hold on, Draco shouted, struggling to keep the ship steady. The turbulence felt unending, the walls of the ship closing in. I clenched my jaw, feeling the weight of fear press against my chest. I had faced the unknown before, but this was different. The hunger was more than just a foe. It was an embodiment of our darkest fears, a manifestation of everything we had ever tried to escape. We're through, Draco shouted, and suddenly the ship broke free of the clouds. The landscape below unfolded like a nightmarish vision, twisted formations rising from the ground. The colors were unnatural, deep reds and sickly greens, the air thick with an oppressive energy. The ground seemed to pulse, as if it were alive, writhing beneath our feet. There's our landing site, I pointed to a clearing that stood out among the chaos, a stark contrast to the surroundings. It was a natural formation, almost like an ancient altar rising from the ground, its surface glistening with dark energy. Dracos maneuvered the ship closer, his focus unwavering. Let's hope this is what we need. As the ship touched down, a wave of unease washed over me. The quiet was unnerving, broken only by the distant rumble of thunder, a storm brewing in the depths of the planet's atmosphere. We need to move quickly, I said, unstrapping myself from my seat. We can't afford to waste time. Dracos followed suit, arming himself with a sleek, advanced weapon. I'm ready. With one final glance at the swirling shadows outside, we stepped into the unknown. The air was thick with tension, almost electric, as if the atmosphere itself held its breath. I could feel the weight of the hunger pressing against my mind, whispering fears I had tried to bury. Stay close, I warned, moving forward cautiously. The clearing was eerily silent, the altar looming before us, a stark reminder of the power that had once thrived here. Dark energy crackled in the air, and I could see the pulsating core embedded in the stone, a swirling mass of shadows and light. Is that it? Dracos asked, pointing at the core. Yes, I confirmed, heart pounding in my chest. That's where we need to focus our energy. As we approached, the shadows around us stirred, a flicker of movement that sent shivers down my spine. We're not alone, I whispered. The darkness coiled and twisted, forming shapes that danced just beyond the edge of my vision. It felt as if the very shadows were alive, a manifestation of the hunger seeking to protect its heart. We need to draw it out, I said, determination hardening within me. If we can distract it, we might be able to tap into the core. Right, Draco said, scanning the surroundings. I'll create a diversion. Before I could respond, he stepped away, positioning himself at the edge of the clearing. With a quick motion, he unleashed a burst of energy from his weapon, light the shadows. The darkness recoiled, hissing as it withdrew. Now, I shouted, rushing toward the core. As I reached the altar, the dark energy surged, twisting and writhing around me. I could feel its presence, a palpable force seeking to consume everything in its path. The whispers grew louder, each word dripping with malice. You cannot escape. You will join us. No, I yelled, focusing on the light within me. The energy surged, filling me with warmth. I extended my hands toward the core, channeling everything I had into the pulsating mass. The shadows writhed, recoiling from the light as I pressed on. I could see Dracos fighting against the darkness, firing energy blasts that lit up the clearing. But the shadows were relentless, coiling around him, seeking to pull him into their depths. 
Dracos, I shouted, panic seizing my heart. Get back here. I'm fine, he replied, voice strained. Just keep it distracted. I turned my attention back to the core, pouring every ounce of energy into it. The shadows surged around me, clawing at my mind, but I refused to yield. I had to sever this connection. The core responded, glowing brighter as the shadows twisted and writhed, fighting against the light. I could feel the hunger, its presence more defined now, a dark force that sought to engulf us. You cannot defeat us. We are eternal. I gritted my teeth, forcing my will against the darkness. No, you will not take this world. With a final surge, I focused everything I had, pouring my energy into the core. The light expanded, engulfing the clearing in a radiant glow. I could see the shadows convulsing, their form becoming indistinct as the energy surged. Now, Dracos, I yelled, knowing we had to act fast. He raced toward me, his weapon charged with energy. On three. One, two, three. Together, we unleashed a torrent of energy, a blinding wave that surged toward the core. The darkness screamed a sound that echoed through the clearing as the energy struck the core. The explosion of light was blinding, and I felt the ground tremble beneath us. The shadows twisted and writhed, their forms dissipating in the brilliance. For a moment, I felt weightless, suspended in the power of the light. But then the energy surged back, a shock wave that threw us back. I landed hard against the ground, gasping for air. The clearing was engulfed in a maelstrom of light and darkness the core at the center pulsating erratically. Get up, Draco shouted, scrambling to his feet. I pushed myself up, heart racing. The core was collapsing, shadows swirling around it, and I could feel the hunger fighting against the light. We need to finish this, I yelled, determination flooding my veins. Focus everything on the core. Draco's nodded, and we positioned ourselves at the edge of the clearing once more. Together, we channeled our energy, pushing against the darkness that threatened to swallow us whole. The core pulsed violently, shadows clawing at the light. But we pressed on, channeling every ounce of our strength into the core, fueling the light as it surged forward. The shadows screamed, their cries echoing through the clearing as the energy enveloped the core, pushing against the darkness that sought to consume it. We're almost there, I shouted, feeling the heat of the light intensify. The core trembled, and with one final push, we unleashed a torrent of energy that struck the heart of the hunger. The explosion of light consumed the clearing, a blinding beacon that echoed through the darkness. And then, silence. The clearing was still, the shadows dissipated into nothingness, leaving only the remnants of the pulsating core. I collapsed to my knees, gasping for breath, the weight of exhaustion pressing down on me. Did we do it? Dracos asked his voice shaky. I think so, I replied, still reeling from the intensity of the moment. But we need to be sure. As I examined the remnants of the core, I could see the faint glow of energy still pulsing within. It was weakened, but not entirely extinguished. We need to destroy it completely, I said, determination fueling my words. We can't let it come back. Dracos nodded, steeling himself. Let's finish this. Together, we approached the core, channeling our remaining energy into one final strike. As we unleashed the light, a blinding flash enveloped the clearing, consuming everything in its path. But then, just as the light began to fade, the ground shook violently beneath us. A fissure opened up, revealing a dark abyss that seemed to pull everything into its depths. Get back, I shouted, grabbing Dracos's arm as the ground crumbled away. The shadow surged, forming into a massive figure that loomed above us, a dark silhouette rising from the depths. Fools, it boomed, voice echoing with malevolence. You think you can destroy what you do not understand? I could feel the weight of dread settle in my stomach as the figure took shape, a monstrous entity composed of shadows and swirling darkness. Its eyes burned with fury, a deep void that threatened to consume everything in its path. We will end this, I yelled, stepping forward, determination hardening within me. But the darkness laughed, a chilling sound that echoed through the clearing. 
You are but children playing with forces beyond your comprehension. Before I could respond, the entity surged forward, tendrils of darkness lashing out toward us. Move, Draco shouted, and we dove to the side as the shadows struck where we had been standing. The clearing erupted into chaos, the ground shaking violently as the dark entity unleashed its fury. The shadows writhed and twisted, seeking to engulf us, but we fought back, channeling every ounce of energy into our defenses. Keep fighting, I yelled, determination igniting my spirit. We can't let it win. Dracos nodded, firing blasts of energy into the darkness, but the entity seemed unfazed. It continued its assault, the shadows swirling around us, a dark storm seeking to crush us beneath its weight. Focus on the core, I shouted, hoping to distract it. If we can weaken it further, we might stand a chance. With a surge of energy, we unleashed everything we had, pouring our strength into the remnants of the core. The light flickered, battling against the darkness that sought to consume it. But the entity was relentless, shadows clawing at us, seeking to drag us into its depths. Hold on, Dracos yelled, desperation coloring his voice. We can't give up now. I felt a surge of hope, a reminder that we were in this together. Together, I echoed, channeling every ounce of strength into the light. The core pulsed, energy surging as we fought back against the darkness. The shadows writhed, twisting around us, but we pressed on, the light growing brighter as we focused our will. And then, in a blinding flash, the core exploded, sending a shock wave through the clearing. The darkness screamed, a cacophony of rage that echoed in the air as the shadows dissipated, revealing the heart of the entity, a swirling mass of dark energy. Now, I shouted, feeling the energy surge within me. Finish it. With one final push, we unleashed a torrent of light that struck the heart of the darkness. The explosion echoed through the clearing, and for a moment, everything fell silent. And then, the void shattered. The entity roared, a sound that shook the very fabric of reality as the darkness collapsed in on itself. Shadows twisted and writhed, consumed by the light, and I felt the energy surge through me, a connection to the very essence of the universe. But just as the light threatened to engulf the darkness, a rift opened, a portal swirling with chaotic energy. I could feel the pull of it, a dark force seeking to reclaim what it had lost. No, I shouted feeling the weight of despair settle in my chest. We can't let it escape. But the shadows surged, the entity reaching for the rift, tendrils of darkness stretching toward the escape. Dracos, I yelled, panic clawing at my throat. We have to stop it. He nodded, determination flashing in his eyes. We can't let it win. Together, we focused our energy, pouring everything we had into the light. The shadows writhed, but we pressed on, refusing to let the darkness reclaim its hold. The rift pulsed, shadows clawing at the edges, but we fought back, channeling our energy into one final strike. Now, I shouted, feeling the surge of power as we unleashed the light. The explosion of energy consumed the clearing, engulfing the rift in a brilliant flash. The shadows screamed, the darkness dissipating as the rift collapsed in on itself. And then, silence. I collapsed to my knees, gasping for breath. The clearing was still, the darkness vanished, leaving only the remnants of the altar behind. Did we do it? Dracos asked, voice shaky. I think so, I replied, heart racing. But we need to be sure. We approached the altar, examining the remnants of the core. It was dim, but the energy still pulsed faintly, a reminder of the darkness that had once thrived here. We need to destroy it completely, I said, determination hardening within me. We can't let it come back. Dracos nodded, stealing himself. Let's finish this. Together, we channeled our remaining energy into one final strike. As we unleashed the light, a blinding flash enveloped the clearing, consuming everything in its path. And in that moment, as the light surged forth, I realized the truth. We were not just fighting against a darkness that sought to consume us. We were fighting for the very essence of life itself. As the explosion echoed through the clearing, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. 
The darkness had been vanquished, the hunger defeated, and in that moment I knew we had forged a new path, a future free from the shadows that had threatened to engulf us. But deep down, a flicker of doubt remained. The darkness had not been destroyed, it had merely been contained, and as we stood amidst the remnants of the altar, I couldn't shake the feeling that the hunger was not truly gone. We had won the battle, but the war was far from over.